Hi everybody, welcome to Adobe Live on Behance.net. Today is day two, my name is Michael Jarrett. We're here with Lucas Albrecht and we're doing editorial design. We're kind of pushing the limits of editorial design actually today <laughs> in InDesign. So thank you for joining us. Uh, if you're just now joining us, welcome. Say hello and let us know where you're from so we can see who's up at 4 a.m. or who's uh, at work watching this. We won't tell anybody. Um, let's take a look at the schedule. We've actually had a fun-filled day prior to this, uh, starting at 9 a.m. Uh, we're the last slot today. We had Rachel Roth and Stephanie Brookler, and now we're here with Lucas. So tune in tomorrow morning at 9 a.m. Um, or whatever your local time is. We're gonna be on live tomorrow at the same time. We're here for two hours right now. Um, couple cool things going on today. First of all, you can win um, some cool little prizes we have here. If you participate in the chat, uh, we've got a sticker and some Adobe tool set um, tattoos. So all you have to do in 30 minutes is say hi, let us know where you're from, ask a question, and we'll pick a random winner from the chat. So be sure to sign in and do that. And then at an hour and a half in, we've got a challenge going on. And today's challenge, uh, we're inviting you to create a 90s themed photography zine using InDesign, using Adobe Stock. It's gotta be um, two, at least two pages, but go crazy, add as many pages as you want. Um, remember the theme is back to the 90s. So please work on that and submit. Um, you can find all that information in the challenge tab, which is to the right of the chat tab on behance.net slash live. Uh, and we'll be taking a look at those on screen later. We'll be providing some commentary, some feedback, and eventually we'll pick a winner. Uh, our favorite is gonna receive a one year subscription to Creative Cloud for free. So uh, please participate in that. But I'm really excited because if you haven't tuned in yesterday, we, we are kind of pushing the limits of InDesign today. Um, Lucas has been using some scripts to automate some processes and, and create uh, almost like automatic page layouts using a variety of, mm -hmm. of data. Um, so why don't you take us through what we kind of did yesterday, bring everybody up to speed, um, and we'll talk a little bit about what we're gonna do later today as well. Totally. Um, so we got started basically outlining um, my general um, goals for this project. Uh, I let you guys know a little bit of how the system works for the scripting, you know, where the computers are at, uh, how it's all structured, and then I ran the script which generated a spread and uh, kind of outlined what each one of those uh, pieces of environmental data are kind of doing and where they're coming from. Uh, and then we kind of brought in what I thought was my personal kind of statement of purpose for the project. So like my own reinterpretation of the brief basically that Adobe gave me. Um, and then we sort of uh, ended there, uh, playing around a little bit with scripting and Illustrator to make new form, uh, bringing it back in. And we, we took a screenshot of a little uh, typographic moment which generated this background. Uh, so we were just kind of playing, playing. Yeah, I, w I would kind of say that was the theme word of yesterday and probably <laughs> today was, was playfulness. There was a lot of experimentation. Um, I think we're going to try and get viewers involved too in making decisions on the fly so that the work that we're producing today can kind of only have happened in this moment with the help of the audience. Um, between us, I mean, with all these environmental factors that you have yeah, totally. being brought in. And actually, can we go back to, yep. to take a look at the generative spread um, and just quickly run down um, what's, what's being pulled in and how mm -hmm. that's creating a new page every single time. So I'm on this page right now and I'm gonna go ahead um, and run the script, which is gonna generate a new page for us to look at. You know, why are we in a hurry? Let's place this right here so that we just have, you know, the blank one and then the annotation uh, following up. So I'm just gonna zoom in and go through it real quick. Uh, date and time. Uh, this is an API that brings in um, not the headline, but top news of the moment. I think it's the first line in the, in the story or the um, uh, a summary of it. Uh, this is a screenshot, uh, which they won't all be flattering as you can <laughs> notice here. Uh, it's a screenshot um, uh, of the uh, Behance page, the, the live, um, the chat and whatever you guys are seeing. A um, little update on how Ethereum is doing. 
Uh, and then down here, I've sp uh, spliced an animation uh, into its frames, and it's kind of like in order, adding one. Uh, per page. Well, I'm going out of order a little bit with the generation of the spread, so maybe it won't be in order, but you know. It'll still be fun. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and then uh, a little update on how we're doing in San Francisco with the weather. Cool, yeah, and I think the most, I mean, one of the most interesting things about this is uh, you mentioned yesterday that you've got a network of computers set up, mm -hmm. and a couple of those computers are set to um, take screenshots of the live stream mm -hmm. that's happening right now every 30 seconds. So when you create a new page in InDesign, uh, these computers send that screenshot and it automatically um, adds it to the frame. So we actually are kind of generating content in real time. It's a little bit of like a window within a window look in, totally. into the live stream on the live stream. Yep. Um, and uh, everybody in chat that's participating will be there as well, which is kind of interesting. Hello to Dubai, hello to OKC, yeah. hello to Seattle. Cheers from Seattle. <laughs> Thanks for joining us, everybody. Yeah, cool. And then, you know, this is sort of um, uh, Sam Panther, like I mentioned last time. And it, I don't think I gave him as thorough uh, of a shout out as I could have. Uh, this is his page. You know, he, I kind of made it sound like I had the vision and he sort of made it happen when really it was a collaboration. We talked through everything. So um, he has a very fun uh, website. I don't know if you guys will get sound from my thing, but you can play this chain. Oh, it's wow. kind of wild. Uh, and he's some <laughs> more projects that he's done, and these are a couple that we worked on together. Um, but a lot of funky uh, SVG stuff and yeah. whatnot that I have no idea how to do. So, <laughs> shout out Sam. Nice. Uh, and yeah, and this is sort of what we came up with uh, with scripting. But there's, you know, like you can play with random randomized placement. You can find different kinds of APIs. You can um, really use scripting in many different ways. And uh, yeah. Right, and traditionally scripting, you found in your experience, mm -hmm. um, traditionally is thought of as a productivity thing. I mean, you're working with um, mm -hmm. hundreds, maybe thousands of spreads, and scripting can kind of help you speed up or automate some of the workflows. Totally. We're pushing scripting, you're pushing scripting beyond that. As, as a, mm -hmm. an artistic and design practice, as, um, and as part of this almost thesis that you're talking about, um, right. generative design. Yeah, we, we thought that maybe it was a way to kind of help give the experience itself a voice. So there's a way where you can see this as uh, this moment is sort of being represented. Like there's, there's a memory of what's happening right now. Uh, each spread has sort of a unique set uh, of things that are you know happening on it that couldn't happen at any other time. And it's sort of like a more so than a manifestation of like what I wanted to put in the spread, even though of course I'm complicated in that system, it's more uh, what right now looks like mm -hmm. on the spread a little bit, right. if that makes any sense. Yeah. yeah. Cool, so what are we gonna, uh, what are you hoping to accomplish today um, as we build this thing out a little bit further? Yeah, so uh, yesterday we kind of uh, played around with a few different things and we ended up here. Um, I was sort of looking at it a little bit and I think uh, there's still some possibilities and some ideas that I want to work through uh, with this spread to kind of set us up uh, moving forward. I'm hoping to also like get going with the cover a little bit um, and kind of approach making it a little bit of a different way for that. Uh, and then I have a little bit of writing that I wanted to include, so a little bit of typesetting. Okay. And taking a look at what that looks like. Cool. And while we do that, if anybody has questions about um, Lucas's workflow or, or even the concept behind it or any general InDesign questions, uh, Adobe questions, feel free to ask um, us and we'll, we'll take a little bit of time to answer those questions. Um, I know we generated some interesting conversations yesterday, had a little viewer participation <laughs> helping us vote on some graphics. So we'd like to do that again. So don't be shy, say hello, ask us some questions and we'll get started. Yeah, don't be afraid to throw a curveball at us. Um, this is our process, and I'm more than happy to change things up or address whatever comes up. Cool. So, cool, cool. So um, for this right here, I was kind of thinking that, you know, I, I talked about having this brief and sort of reinterpreting the brief based on what I want from the project, and we kind of brought it in in this really messy, goofy way where it's collapsing on itself. And I think in some ways for me that's, uh, addressing how jumbled this stuff could be. Uh, and there's sort of this more succinct uh, uh, statement that kind of gets to the core of this. So in the making of this spread, I think there's a layer of interpretation that we're not really like um, taking advantage of, meaning it's kind of all happening at once and we could sort of like slow this 
reveal process down a little bit and kind of get more spreads out of it uh, and sort of embody a little bit more of what I'm trying to communicate um, instead of just like getting everything on the page all at once. Uh, so what I want to do here is I'm going to take that out for a second. I'm going to um, generate a new spread. Um, and you know, this is kind of when things get funny because if I generate a spread now and I put it out of sequence, there's like a some kind of weird time travel that's oh, kind of happening. Right. Uh, and I, you know, I don't know, that's kind of exciting uh, for me. So I'm going to put this off to the side right here because we're going to get back to that. Um, and I'm going to put that there, throw it to the back, bring the intro to the front. Um, so yeah, so we're coming into it, and I thought maybe just to slow things down a little bit, we have that moment, and we sort of happen onto that moment. So this is, you know, me working through stuff. So I thought it could be fun if we kind of attempt to visually interpret, uh, or sort of play and riff off of this idea of working through an idea, or, or you know, so in the same way in which um, I'm processing this information, you know, visually, and I'm making a spread out of it, I want to like take that one step further. So I just took a screen grab of it. I'm gonna go ahead and grab that. Uh, I'm gonna bring it to Photoshop, and I'm going to literally process the image one more time. Um, So I just made a bitmap out of it. Hmm. Um, there was some funky gradient stuff happening, and I think that you know, like bitmapping doesn't agree too much with that kind of stuff. So you end up with, uh, you know, these over simplified versions of it. That I think are pretty interesting. Like, you know, I wouldn't draw this. Right. I wouldn't <laughs> think to. Um, so yeah, but maybe we don't want to stay in a black and white world. Um, so. Another thing that I do, um, probably, uh, whoops, not index color, uh, probably too much is uh, go to adjustment and do the gradient map move. I like it probably too much. <laughs> um, but let's sort of like look through. Let me see, where were we at with, we, we, we so this is, uh, we decided it was Donatello or no? Which Ninja Turtle was it? Yes, Donatello, Donatello. purple. Cool. It's even got the little eye holes through the... That is... Bandana. Or were they just more... wearing them above? No, no, they were masks. No, they were masks. Yeah, yeah they were masks. Mm -hmm. um, so maybe we won't stay in a Ninja Turtle theme, <laughs> but... We're um, moving. Yeah, we're moving. We're growing. Well, what about today's theme, 90s theme? Which that... Kind 90s of, theme? Yeah. What, does that influence... What do you, I mean, I, what do you guys think is a good palette for 90s? Most uh, 90s themed colored palette. It's really looking kind of funky. Um... This is kind of wild. Yeah, I, so I, I don't totally want to retain too much of it. I want it to fall back somewhat. Oh, you this can is, almost barely tell that effect. Yeah, this is kind of funky. So I'm going to stick to this, and you guys can see that it's mapped. So it's like all, um, you know, ones and zeros, essentially. Uh, bit mapping is usually like what you do when you're preparing for print, like if you're screen printing, or if you guys are not familiar with the process. Uh, and it just kind of takes any value that's close enough to, to white, it makes it white, and any value that's close enough to black, it makes it black. And uh, there's a few different you know patterns and, and ways for you to uh, bitmap an image. Um, so I recommend playing with that. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and save as. We've got a few recommendations. Um, using the color palette that is by the challenge, let's see about oh. that. Or somebody suggested Polo Sport, so I've Googled Polo, Polo Sport. Polo Sport, okay. Yeah, 1990s, a lot of people are saying bright neon colors. Let me see if I can find that. Bright neon colors. Oh yeah, here's in the, in the challenge. Ask actually is kind of. Uh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So let's throw like a. a black in there. Let's make them. Lots of magenta here. <laughs> 
Shalva says, Adobe has a guide for colors, people. <laughs> <laughs> We're breaking the rules. That's looking good. Is that look, yeah, yeah there it brings you go. us in the world. Maybe that yellow, or maybe the magenta is a little more pale. Yeah, is that softer. A little not, not darker, just a little softer. Boom. All right. Nice. Cool. Baby blue. Thank you, everybody. We're going with 90s inspiration. All right, save. Bring that to the desktop. Boom, replace. Looks good to me. Now let's um, back to InDesign. Let's generate a new spread. Um, boom. And that's that's what we wore when the oh, Photoshop when the last exception, yeah. yeah screenshot got taken. And then I want to go ahead and I'm gonna um, what am I gonna do? Oh yeah, I'm gonna take that line right here. And then, yeah, I just wanted to make sure I covered this for everybody that was asking. Uh, the two typefaces that I've used so far is, uh, I'm gonna go ahead and say Secto. Okay. But maybe it's S-C-T-O, maybe Secto. I don't know. <laughs> um, feel free to correct me <laughs> on the yeah, chat. Uh, and uh, Cell Display, which could be Sal, could be Sail, could be Soul. Not totally sure either. Uh, but you know, this is all. Um, and these are both from the same foundry. Yeah, both from uh, Shiktoika. Um, so they just don't give you easy names to pronounce. They're all. No. All <laughs> yeah, they do what they do, but they make great stuff. Um, I think it's all really fun. I, I've used uh, Dia quite a bit. Um, kind of sick of Chapin. Uh, yeah, they all kind of feel like you could pronounce it in a few different ways. So <laughs> I'm just going to leave that alone. And go back here, um, and we're gonna go to so. Um, Mary Ellen is asking, "What controls do you use to fill in random text?" And I think that sh I think the question is about filling with placeholder text. And if you just create a text box and right click, there should be an option to fill with placeholder text. Boom! 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 So here we're gonna kind of look how I can get a relatively even space. I'm gonna bring it down a little bit. Maybe I'm gonna go all caps with this. And I'm gonna get rid of this. And And for you this is sort of like the one sentence succinct. Statement yeah, of the, of the thing you're interested in, and it's not even a too smart of a sentence or <laughs> too like good of a job, like kind of wrapping my head around everything and what it means and what I want to do. It's more so, kind of what it comes down to. Like I just want to complicate my authorship while playing with the barriers between user, designer, and tool. Um, that's kind of like the thing I can hold on to in that bigger sort of explanation of what I'm interested in. Um, which really, you know, it's like I'm here at Adobe, I wanna play with InDesign and see what it can do and see ways in which uh, I can feel empowered by the tool, uh, more so that I can feel beholden to what the tool wants me to do, Right. if that makes sense. Uh, and you know, I think as we've seen, at least with how I'm looking at it, I think there's a lot of exciting ways where you can kind of like own the tool a little bit more than you think you do, but at the same time, use the tool so that you don't have full control of everything you do. Right, we've seen definitely with a lot of this work, like it's sort of um, almost surrendering to process or the playfulness or, or even the tools uh, limitations mm -hmm. or not limitations, the freedom almost. And we've used multiple Adobe tools actually, jumping back and forth between Illustrator and Photoshop. And that interplay, mm -hmm. um, I imagine, creates another dynamic in the final work. Yeah, totally. Um, I kind of want to tie things up just a little bit so when I stretch it, we don't get such a big space. Um, and that, you know, I, I, you guys can list and please go ahead and do how many uh, type faux pas I'm <laughs> committing here. Let's count the typography uh, crimes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, I taught a class on 
typography uh, for undergrad uh, last semester, and I'm sure my employer would not have been happy with me. <laughs> no, they were pretty open-minded about this stuff, but yeah. Uh, See, we have Arturo Gomez back in the chat. He was our chat and win winner last yesterday, last day. Hi, Arturo. in place inside of this outline shape that I made and I'm not getting it. Oh, the image. Yeah, I thought I could for this. I'm trying to before. Um. Zambreed says, Zambreen says she loves. It's ambiguous what she loves, but I'm assuming she's talking about your spread. <laughs> <laughs> Paste in place. So what I'm trying to do here, I'm trying to uh, insert this image that we just made inside of the outline text. Almost like a clipping mask. Yeah, but I, it. I thought I could, uh, I'm not sure what I'm not getting right now, I could do a paste in place into the object, but let me try. Try clicking that to see if that does it. Not as power. Uh, where do I find that in in design? Going back and forth from Illustrator. Oh, um, like a a clipping mask. Yeah. Let me see if I can bring both things into Illustrator and do it there. <laughs> Brandy says ungroup and do. I think actually Brandy might be right. There ungroup did it? appear to be that dashed line indicating that right. it's grouped object. Mm -hmm. Maybe we don't want it. Well, maybe we it. do want to do one word at a time, but. What if I ungroup it and keep it selected and then paste in place? Of course, I wouldn't be able to see it with this back there, but. Oh, is it maybe because it's several words? Maybe yeah, if I ungroup. There are groups within groups. Could ungroup everything, create a oh, compound path. Oh, here we go. Path. We can do it. We, got we, can, it. we can do a section by section. Okay. Here we go. That's fun. Thank you, what Brandy. Brandy. Thank you, Brandy. Yeah. She said she just did the same thing and had to place each word individually. Yeah, I I, I tested it out uh, on this on the previous on the intro, and then I didn't come. I didn't get you know I didn't have to deal with that because it was one word. So I think maybe I want to, you know, we really are losing, you know, losing. Uh, that image or that image is, you know, becoming now this memory of something, uh, but it has like very little relationship to what that thing was. Um, I kind of wonder what happens if I try to bias a little bit more um, real estate. Real estate, yeah, that's the word. Sally says this is giving me life. <laughs> That's, we yeah. love it. <laughs> <laughs> That's a very uh, uh, beautiful overstatement. <laughs> <laughs> but I appreciate it for sure. Yeah, keep them coming. Cool. Now we're back here and we're back to boom, boom. So pretty ridiculous, but I kind of love it. Um, <laughs> I'm getting like a nice motion from the left to the right. Some of these yeah, more horizontal bands are kind of bringing me through. Mm -hmm. Now I'm wondering if changing the color was the right move because it's so abstract that, may that maybe actually having the the real memory of this, um, real memory, but maybe seeing this in it and seeing the color and recognizing the shapes would do more for us. Um, we would know. 
we would have never gotten here unless we tried, right? So I don't know, someone can speak up if they think I'm going the wrong way here, but I'm gonna go ahead and try and see what it looks like to just bring the, um, the literal, the whole spread sp as image. As is, yeah. And there's, you know, of course, like smarter and, and, and better uh, export methods than the screenshot uh, for whatever reason. Um, I just think it's such an easy way to do it, um, that opening another window and sort of like working through what that means. Um, let me see, where's that um, transparency blend setting? Boom. Boom. Yeah. Samira asks if you if you're using the the command paste in place, that is correct. I am, yeah, totally. It's so yeah, option command V for me. Um, so this is what we had, and you know, we didn't totally lose the '90s vibe. I think. No, it's, it's there. You got that yes. purplish magenta and that uh, bright green. Here that for now. So I don't know, uh, but there's something about kind of. Maybe there's more of a memory, more of a reference if we stay in the same palette. Um, you can even kind of see where the word intro kind of goes through and moves through it. It's kind of funky. And how are you imagine? I know we, we discussed yesterday that mm -hmm. um, in its final form, we're not even really sure if this is printed material, yeah. digital experience, but right. you are imagining sort of a flow and yeah totally I think that um, yeah I think the main thing we're making here in my head is the video itself and the stream experience but I do feel uh, like anytime you make a book or anything that references the book you have to sort of account for uh, what a book wants to be and what a book is so even if we sort of like take it somewhere else um, I think and even if we decide to the decide to defy to defy those things uh, I think that, you know, the materiality of a book is important, and right now we're not really, like, talking about that because we don't know if it's going to be material or not. But pagination and flow and sort of pace, um, we're not, you know, we kind of made this move to kind of slow things down yep. and, and bring the intro into it. We're not totally facing those issues right now quite yet, but I think it's uh, important to kind of check those boxes in the sense of, like, you know, how is this moving? Um, these objects that are locked into place, I think, give a give some sort of sustain for the eye. Uh, you know, something you could in in the script it would have been pretty easy to have that randomized, but I thought maybe because we had, because I intended to have so much movement within it and have so much like sort of playfulness, then having these grounding kind of elements, even as they get kind of lost right. and uh, abstracted, were pretty important. So I am definitely thinking about this as a publication as I work on it, uh, even as I sort of fail to. Uh, do the things that publications need to do, if that makes sense. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I mean, that almost seems like par that challenging that and, and intentionally failing to do what a publication mm -hmm. needs to do is kind of what makes this a little bit more interesting, maybe. Yeah, totally. And I think that, you know, just spend an afternoon on Behance and you're going to see all kinds of interesting takes on what a publication is and what it can do. Um, so, yeah. Cool. So I'm kind of digging that, um, pretty into that. I did not see this coming the way that it ended up, but I think that bringing a little bit of uh, white space back in, like letting it breathe a little bit while having such complex form within uh, the type. And I'm super sorry, Shiktoika, uh, about what I'm doing <laughs> to your beautifully <laughs> cut typefaces. Uh, but you know, you'll be fine. Uh, <laughs> so now I'm even wondering if I wanna go further and I wanna kind of lose a little bit of that top and bottom. And I think kind of, I think I like it contained, just because of how much it fits in. Now within the margins. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. We'll leave that there. I see our countdown has reached zero. You ready for some explosions? <laughs> yeah, let's blow up. <laughs> <laughs> there it is. So this is your reminder to chat and win. We've got an animation. Um, 
We've got some stickers, tattoos. Uh, just say hello, throw some hype in the chat, ask a question, say hi to your neighbor, and in about a minute we'll pick a winner randomly to win these cool prizes. <laughs> Thank you for all the hype. Show me the money. <laughs> the night is young. Where is it nighttime right now? Yeah. Let us know if it's nighttime, if the sun is down, where you're from, while our chat and win winner's name is going to resolve on this screen in front of us. Tattoos. Do it, folks. It's nighttime in Dubai and in France. Brandy strapped at work. Okay, so who wants to win some tattoos? Austin, Texas, that's where I'm from. Here we go. I see a Brazil up there, that's where I'm from. 5.30 p.m. Time to kick off your shoes. Dreamweaver made it to the tattoos. Yes, Dreamweaver's still alive and well. Okay, well, we're gonna get a winner's name soon enough to get these tattoos. You guys can keep going, I'll switch back when it's ready. Okay, we're gonna keep going. Cool. Oh, just gonna get some one sec. Yeah. Omar. Aragon. Aragon. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> yeah, congratulations, Omar. You are our most recent winner of the Adobe Live sticker and some cool Adobe tattoos. Everybody, give it up for Omar in the chat. Golf clap. Golf clap. Quiet golf clap. We should have Vuvuzelas in the seat. <laughs> right. <laughs> the opposite. All right. Thanks, everybody, for participating in that extremely grueling challenge. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Let's get back into it. Cool. So I'm going to change gears a little bit now and loop back to our cover. Um, keeping with the spirit of the project, I thought we could start with... Um, Taking a selfie. Can we get everyone from the studio? Is that no? All right, nope. Yeah, Are you allowed yeah, on you camera? <laughs> <laughs> he's, he's signing away. We're introducing Paco. Yeah, he's, he's the man Paco. behind the yeah, scene. Cameo once or twice. Yeah. All right. Beautiful. Wow. <laughs> I have not seen photo booth in forever. <laughs> <laughs> when is it okay to stretch type? Alex says never, never, never stretch type. It, uh, who makes the rules? That's um. true. <laughs> you make the rules. The You in the open-ended sense. From a uh, traditional uh, type <laughs> uh, uh, point, uh, it's, it's, it's never okay. <laughs> From a messing around and trying to come up with new form, uh, it's totally fine. Um, so I guess, is it okay? I guess it, it depends who you're answering to. So if you're, you know, hired on to do this like hyper modernist kind of uh, whatever, then maybe that's not really what they want to see. <laughs> hyper modernist is modernism taken to its yeah. most rigid? <laughs> yeah, most rigid. Okay, yeah, that, okay. <laughs> well, yeah, I, I guess in my mind modernism is, uh, yeah. Rigidity. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, yeah. I guess it, it depends on. Uh, is it a school assignment? Are, are you supposed to uh, be flexing those kinds of muscles? Uh, is it a client that wants something super clean and traditional? It, uh, is it just you messing around? If it's just you messing around and coming up with new stuff, then definitely yeah, uh, whatever you want. It. So, kind of want to just like amp things up just a little bit. It's looking a little. I think it's been too deliberate that too much. I just want to get a little bit more of the color to pop up. Cool. I'm not retouching this so that it's a beautiful photo. I'm just getting ready for the next step. We're actually bringing it back into the color scheme that we've already sort of set right. up, it looks like. Because of my you know horrible quick retouching, just to get a little bit more saturation out, <laughs> I've amped up uh, the we reds. The magentas in everybody's totally. face. we got the green background. Which Weird. normally nobody ever sees. That is actually Here what's behind us yeah. though right now. Yeah. This is a Ninja Turtle theme right. project that you guys have involved. <laughs> right. Which is, you know, one of the foundational sort of uh, pieces of literature of the 21st century. 
Um, <laughs> I don't have a take. I just have yeah, I don't. Uh, so I'm just, I was going to open up the Gaussian blur, but I'm curious if I just click on that and see what happens, if that's good enough. Right, that should be the last setting yeah. that you applied. And the idea that I have slightly less control than I thought I was going to have is actually exciting to me. Uh, there's enough movement in this image that I think is pretty cool. We're getting a little bit of that green, which is nice. Uh, some of that perp is up here hanging out, and uh, you know, Michael's shirt is sort of making a statement. So every, I don't know. Every day. <laughs> every day. <laughs> the darkest day. Yeah. Um, so I'm kind of into that, and I want to save that. I don't need to save for web, but the claw came out to play, so I'm, I'm sticking to it. Uh, boom, boom, boom. Now I'm going to go back into InDesign. So I think I'm going to have this image uh, sort of wrap around the cover, um, but I'm not going to deal with the exacts of that right now. I'm not going to deal with what that looks like exactly uh, front and back. I'm just sort of going to find um, a moment and kind of let it ride and then maybe Maybe it will take some tweaking later on, but maybe I don't want the, maybe the darkness can be oh, safe yeah, for the yeah. back. Maybe get, leave it a little bit more open. It's kind of a nice place to start. So what's next? Um, that is kind of the like question of the day. <laughs> <laughs> what's next? <laughs> what's next? Does he have a plan? Is he making things <laughs> up as he goes? Who knows? Um, I'm gonna go display light and <laughs> boom, we have a cover. Now let's keep the magic alive and take this back over to InDesign. So I kind of, uh, for the sake of this project, because I know that I'm just coming into InDesign and I'm not really like making images that are fully fleshed out in InDesign, I just kind of have an artboard open that I can, that I just drop things into uh, and then, you know, cut it's out. Like the playground. Yeah, it's a little little sandbox. Kitchen sink. Little, little sum sum. Um, so this time around, I'm gonna take out that uh, frame, boom. So I don't know if you guys remember, but we kept the frame in there when we were making the shapes that got us here. Um, so now I'm taking that out. So we're going to get the full kind of complexity of that. And also it will probably take longer. <laughs> Some more scripting here. Cool, and then last time I mentioned to you guys that this is, uh, I've compiled some stuff that I found and tweaked some of it and left some of it as is. So I just wanted to make sure that I got a more proper shout out. Uh, Keetra Dixon uh, sent that over uh, to Matt Ross. Um, I guess he's not getting a proper shout out, but I'm not gonna Maybe Google tomorrow. him. Maybe right tomorrow. Tomorrow, <laughs> tomorrow we'll get a proper shout out. But yeah, he reached out asking uh, for some examples of how she dealt um, with Illustrator and scripting. Um, I'm not totally sure what in here uh, comes out of scripting, but um, she's a cool person to check out if you guys are looking for some pretty um, engaging uh, Illustrator work. Cool. Cool. Thank you, Keetra, for the yeah. script that we've been using today and yesterday. It's a shout out for later there. Shouts out. Boom. Rawr. So now we have this. <laughs> uh, I'm gonna go ahead and pull that move one more time. Keetra Dean Dixon. Okay, some people are asking for the link. I'm just gonna get cool. There you go, Arturo. Something to Google. And so this is, um, well, the script kind of just distorts, transforms, and makes a bunch of copies of yeah. the original object. Mm -hmm. um, and then you just outlined it. Yeah, I just uh, pathfindered it all together. 
Uh, and then... Gave it a stroke. Yeah. And, yeah. Gave it a stroke and took out the fill. And now we're going to go back to InDesign. And we're going to see what it do. Huge, yeah. So let's see. I don't know if it's more exciting to have a little bit of evidence of um no here we're getting some reference of a letter form uh so i don't know if that's like interesting as far as contextualizing what the rest of the texture is or if that's kind of like seeing how the sausage is made you know sometimes when you pull like a move or whatever uh but then you still let a little piece of it show mm -hmm. uh it might kind of kill the magic for the whole thing or it might serve as like an entry point into understanding what you're seeing. And so how, I mean, you're gonna make that decision, just try a few things and then go with one? Yeah, I think we're just gonna look at it and yeah. we're gonna try to see. I mean, I don't know conceptually which one makes more sense right now. And when I say conceptually, I think uh, it's important to make a distinction. Like I'm not so much right now concerned with how this reads. Like I'm not so much, when I say, you know, like um, this, what I think it, this is about or what I think it's saying, I'm more so thinking about the narrative that I'm imposing onto it as like as like a set of rules for me to make with, right? So it's more so like, if I think this does that, uh, I generate form with it. I think the concern of like how, what it all means when you experience it, that's like a whole other thing right. that I can't wrap my head around right now. And maybe I wouldn't. I mean, you know, I think there are some distinctions between like being committed to the object and making the thing that you think is the most compelling and making a thing because it's meant to do something. Uh, and I think, you know, within the definition of design, there's like room for both. And one of them is more maybe market pointed and one of it is more committed to sort of the making of the design object. Right, well, and how much of it is um, actually being experienced by others? Mm -hmm. I mean, regardless of your intent or the, as you were thinking about it, a certain amount of it when people experience this is gonna be, um, they're gonna bring that meaning to it. Yeah, totally. Their and, meaning to it. And I think especially with a project like this, you know, and different projects call for different things, uh, I'm very comfortable leaving enough room for people to see themselves in it. Mm -hmm. uh, so when we talk about, you know, this information, the way that it's getting pulled in, um, I can sort of say, I can, I can talk through what I want from it and what I thought was exciting, but I, I'm never expecting that to be the experience of everyone that comes across it. And I think to leave that room is, you know, one realistic because you don't have control over other people's right, minds, and, yeah. and you shouldn't. Uh, <laughs> uh, and, and and two, I think more fun, um, and maybe more of like rich territory. So I'm just kind of moving this around and trying to decide if I like seeing like movement across uh, and kind of having like uh, this shape take a specific kind of space within it or if it's more exciting for me when it just falls back as texture. Um, if anyone has an opinion, I'll listen. But for now, I'm just kind of working through it. This became almost a little architectural when it was down there, kind of set right. near the bottom. Um, obviously, like, imagining kind of a sky. I mean, that open area. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's kind of nice, yeah. Um. So I'm in sort of disbelief at how quickly time has gone by, but we've got 45 minutes until we're gonna be reviewing challenge, today's challenge submission. So um, if you don't know what I'm talking about, go ahead and check the challenge tab to the right of the chat. Uh, the challenge today is to create a 90s themed um, photography zine. So at least two pages using InDesign. There's some Adobe stock templates for you in there. Use type, use image, go crazy. We're going crazy. So. Um, anything goes, and we'll be happy to take a look at those in 45 minutes. Um, all the information you need is in the chat challenge tab to the right of the chat. And it looks like we've already got seven submissions, so that's pretty incredible. Really excited to take a look at those. Yeah, for sure. I'm really curious about. I, yeah, this is an inter. This is. It's a fun one. This is kind of a fun one. Okay, so we're coming up with some stuff, and I, you know, I still, I kind of want to leave enough space, uh, 
not literal sort of space, but more so like, I want this to fall back enough to have some like type happening on top of it. Um, but I'm kind of curious now and I'm going to bring in a totally different moment and kind of, um, uh, let me see. Let me try bringing this in to text edit. Text edit. And I love just it. Just kind of get rid of some stuff. Actually, before we do that, what did you bring in here? Is this like this is the image data, or S I missed what you pulled in? Yeah, so I just brought in the image into text edit, and I just kind of <laughs> deleted stuff. <laughs> um, and that's kind of a really sort of uh, cheap way uh, to glitch an image. Um, I was not uh, smart enough. Okay, here we go. I can still save this. <laughs> I was gonna say I wasn't smart enough to make a copy before I started. Uh, so let's do that real quick. We know uh, you would have just gone with it anyway. Though, yeah. Had that happened. But I think because it's such like a random process, uh, I think maybe it's a good opportunity for us to have uh, another sort of voting moment. <laughs> yeah, just have more fun. So that's wild, right? That's like everything that I just said about leaving enough like visual space for the type. Like, I'm not sure if that's going to help us with that. Um, let's. Let's do the selfie. Bring the selfie in there. And you know, this is such a hack way of, and not hack like as in like hacking, but hack as in like I'm a hack, I don't know what I'm doing. Uh, <laughs> way to generate form and kind of like glitch an image. But as you can see, or maybe you can't totally see, I have no idea what I'm doing in this file. I'm like, well, who would? I'm not sure that right. this is an actual yeah. language. I'm literally just opening it up. <laughs> and you save it again. Yeah, you and just that's save what you it. Get. And you just see what happens. And sometimes it, uh, I'm sure there's someone out there that understands how those files work. Um, I sure don't. So it's just, for me, it's just about getting the image in there and trying to do some stuff uh, and kind of maybe like I'll copy and paste something because, you know, you don't know, but I don't know either. No. Uh, so this is that one. Wow. Cool. Let's do one more. I'm going to be trying this now. Yeah, if anyone wants to put their uh, uh, design submission. Yeah, design or submission. Challenge submission. Yeah, or, yeah, but maybe they'll submit that. Uh, or, I mean, if <laughs> or it fits the theme. That. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, I'm, uh, someone is asking. Uh, I'm just, I just have text edit open. Uh, and you can do it in Word or anything. Uh, and I just drop the image right onto text edit. Um, and maybe, you know, you don't have to think of this as like the way to generate the final image, but maybe just like if you're feeling a little stale or if like there's something about what you're doing that's um, not getting you quite excited enough or it's just a way to sort of just like press the scramble button and just see what happens. Uh, and maybe from that you can take some inspiration so these are the ones that we came up with. Um, it's pretty amazing to just go in here and change one letter or one character yeah, and then yeah. save it and like view the preview of like, uh -huh. have no clue what yeah, is let's happening. Yeah, do one more where I just do that. Um, keep closing text edit. Arturo, I don't think it needs to be a PNG. No, I don't think so. I think it can be a JPEG. Yeah. I don't know what else it can be. But I'd be curious to hear your guys' experience. Uh, I'm just going to go here, and I'm going to delete this N. <laughs> and I'm going to save it. And I'm going to see what it does. And it just does that. <laughs> cool. Wow. Uh, so I'm going to... I don't know when they added rename to Finder. I used to always bring things into uh, Automator to do that. And it's not quite as like thorough, but I've been doing that all the time, especially getting, um, oh, whoops, 
especially getting uh, files ready um, for a client. Um, rename. Cool. Why are you eight? Doesn't matter. <laughs> it wants to be eight. We're gonna let it be eight. Um, Mm, negative one. <laughs> so, um, Yuri says she's joining after a few beers in Amsterdam. Sounds pretty fun. Welcome. Sounds great. <laughs> Let us know what you think of what you see on yeah. the screen. So, are we done with these or should we do more to them? I guess, let's see. Another thing that I like to do, which is another sort of like super cheap way of making image, is to sort of, um, oh yeah. So there's a good chance that sometimes these, sometimes these files just break and they don't work anymore. Um, and sometimes Photoshop refuses to open them. Uh, and you just kind of have to deal with that as it happens. Uh, luckily for us, we can- you know, Could you change the file type in Finder? You can. I was gonna say that uh, worst comes to worst. If it, well, if, if yeah, if you can't <laughs> back to the screenshot. <laughs> if you can't bring it into, uh, well, it looks like it's letting us. Yeah, if you can't bring it in, um, then you can always resort to a beautiful screenshot. And that's another thing that I do all the time. Instead of exporting things, like you know, when I'm in Photoshop working through an image, I'll just like take a zoom into something and take a screenshot, uh, especially if it's like not rendering at full uh, capacity. It's like or even in 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 uh, InDesign when you have a typical display on and it's kind of looking weird or something and it glitches or something, um, I think it's I don't know. It's just a way to generate new form. Um, wow. Is that fun? Is that too noisy? It is noisy. <laughs> yeah, what did I expect? <laughs> So now it's kind of fighting itself. Uh, we're losing, a, maybe we can get a little bit more of the outline, or maybe that will lose something. Um, not as into that. Maybe no outline, and maybe. Get a little separation. Maybe we get the a shadow. separation, yeah. So you're using the effects panel here, which has a lot of the same features as um, layer styles in Photoshop allows you to do blend modes, drop shadows, glows, um, things that you typically would find in Photoshop. Really cool that they're also in InDesign. Yeah. A couple of options for doing, creating effects. So that's giving us just like, maybe I do need to go to typical display. <laughs> uh, it's giving us just a little bit of, whoop. It's giving us just a little bit of separation there. Um, file starting to stutter a little bit. Oh yeah, we've got a lot of image data in here. Let me go back to typical. But I'm not totally sure if I love it. Um, I'm gonna take off the effect and I'm gonna go back to Finder. And I think maybe we need to start from the image we like most. Uh, so we have zero, one, two, three, an eight, <laughs> and I don't know. Maybe are we doing a vote? Yeah, is the way that we voted last time weird? Do you want to change the format? No, let's do it. It the was wonderfully chaotic. <laughs> it was wonderfully chaotic. <laughs> yeah, so zero, one. I'll do this slower. Zero. What I like about this one, um, I think the movement right in there, and maybe I would have to, uh, you know, maybe zoom and crop a certain section and see where to go. So. And like even this moment down here is really nice, especially as a contrast with that little corner. So we don't have to use the whole image, but maybe we just need to pick an image to start from. Um, and um, yeah. So as you see your favorite, they have the little title at the top. As you see your favorite, go ahead and comment. Um, they all start with selfie, so just comment the number one, two, three, 
and eight. Yeah, <laughs> eight is eight, eight is really you know eight, eight is I don't know, uh, not giving us that much to work with necessarily. But hey, maybe maybe you fall in love with it. Um, yeah, so here like in this one, I think like this moment could be nice to sort of like block out, especially if like you know maybe this is the back and this is the front over here. But like this movement is really nice too. And this is starting to get to some of that 90s uh, theme, I mean, a little, you know, a different different angle maybe. Uh, but it kind of reminds me of that kind of, you know, digital imaging like 1.0 kind of yeah, vibe. Yeah, there was a whole like art movement mm -hmm. D something on the, oh, I'll have to find it okay. before I think about it. Well, yeah, so we have two votes. Zero. More votes. <laughs> we need more, more votes. votes. And we can push the color a little bit too if you guys have an opinion on that. So we got we got a couple of zeros, we have a two. So far zeros where we're at. I'm just kind of flicking through them maybe a little too fast. Three, two. One, zero. Zero, one, two. I've seen mostly zeros, yeah. I think. Maybe we're gonna go with zero. Cool. I'm gonna bring zero back into Photoshop. That adaptive filter value. Cool, I'm not gonna bring zero back into Photoshop. I'm gonna let it be what it wants to be. <laughs> um, Depth core, yeah. That's new for me. Yeah. Oh, 2002. I don't know why that feels like. I mean, that that, that was a long time ago. I mean, maybe it, it was so long. It's closer to the 90s. It's closer to the 90s than it is to today. It's true. Which is kind of a crazy thing to think about. But okay, so we're just playing around uh, with this one. Let me see it in. It's almost, it's interesting how even changing the display quality um, <laughs> it's kind of introduces impossible. artifacts that give it a completely different look. And for those of you that don't know, display quality is um, a way of if you've got really big files, a lot of image data, a lot of things going on, and you feel like InDesign's kind of moving a little bit slow or potentially going to crash on you, you can set the display of everything while you're working to be a lower resolution and speeds um, things up for the rest of your process. I'm just gonna, oops. I'm just gonna look at the whole thing smaller here off to the side, just so that I can have a better sense of what we're working with and, and, and pick, a, pick an area to focus on with it. It's gorgeous. <laughs> it's pretty out of control. Um, I don't know, I kind of like the quietness of this sort of middle ground here. And by quiet, you know, it's not quiet. Um, I wonder if I... Mr. Jaff is asking if he can use his own photographs in the challenge. I think that's totally okay to use your own photographs, as long as they are appropriate photographs. Yeah, I, I heard there's some bonus if you use uh, Adobe Stock, but... <laughs> there's, yeah, there might be bonus points if you use Adobe Stock, but I, as an Adobe employee, wouldn't know anything about that. <laughs> So you're kind of just working off to the side of your document. Yeah, uh, just because there's like, I don't know, instead of putting, there's smarter ways to do that. I could have, you know, like made different layers and placed the outline image on that so that I could see it uh, and like lock it in place. Um, but instead, I just did it in the hackiest possible way and I just made it small off to the side so that I could zoom in and kind of work through it. Um, whatever gets 
the job done, right? <laughs> I think that there's a there's a world in which this reads as like a very sort of like sophomoric understanding of what like scripting could be or like programming could be like, you know, maybe it it, it, it it's an it might read like an attempt to like be matrixy or something. Right, right. Um, which I could be disappointed by, or I could think it's funny. And right now I think it's funny. <laughs> uh, you guys can let me know what you think. <laughs> Maybe I'll change my mind later. Uh, but let me. We've got submissions rolling in for today's challenge. Some good looking stuff. Could you not screen capture the image previews that won't open and then edit that? You could, Alex. Totally. Yeah. I just, I mean, if, if that's where we need to go, we can do that. Um, that was just enough of a barrier for me to be like, nah. <laughs> Do you mean the process itself? Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Oh, I gotta use a keyboard command and drag my mouse. But then you had to bring it in somewhere else. Right. It was just enough uh, to dissuade me from attempting. <laughs> Sarah says she loves the lack of control here. How do you feel about that? Uh, I am. Um, that's yeah, totally. Uh, for me, that's what it's all about right now. Um, just kind of losing myself and then finding it all over again. <laughs> <laughs> How inspirational. <laughs> yeah. So, I don't know. I, I mean, I was really into that sort of, like, image that we had to begin with, the the way that uh, the text, the, the type was weaving, and we sort of lost that for the most part. Were you ever interested in bringing the, um, just the word cover that you had transformed back in, or was it just to get out to yeah. the script and illustrator and bring the kind of texture back in? I think I was most interested in just using that to make something, just to use the cover to make the cover. Mm -hmm. you know <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, I don't know if you guys have been watching the, the feed all day, but Steph's not the only one with kids jokes. Um, but yeah. So, but I'm okay losing that for right now, I think. Uh, maybe it'll come back again. Maybe we can try that for something else. But then now, um, I kind of want to bring in some type to play with that. Um, I didn't name this. And I've been trying to come up with a name. And I came up with a couple of things. Uh, like the thing that makes the thing, which is actually like a line from, uh, it's a quote, a Theaster Gaze quote. Uh, from a bigger thing, and I'll talk about that later when I bring in the text. Uh, but the thing that makes the thing is sort of like a loose title. But then I figured I might as well ask you guys if you ca if you have any ideas, or even if you have any ideas, or Paco, if you have any ideas all of what we should name this thing. Uh, so you heard it. We get, uh, you might be able to name this. P editorial publication, digital, potentially print artifact made through a lot of ephemeral kind of like processes. So go ahead and throw your suggestions in. One suggestion, the thing that makes the thing. That's yeah. the thing, all right. Yeah, the thing that makes the thing are Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Yeah. I'm gonna go back to the typical display. Um, I'm kind of struggling a little bit. The computer struggling. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. yeah, I'm always struggling a little bit, but the <laughs> right now specifically, it's mostly the computer that's having a hard time to keep up with all this nonsense. So if you think that's hideous, uh, hopefully you didn't think it was hideous before, but if you think it's hideous now, it's because we're in uh, typical... Uh, typical cool. display quality. Bit turtle. <laughs> I'm bit turtle. What is this thing? I, think, I wonder if Woohoo was uh, an entry, maybe not. The outside, struggle, the outside struggle with a capital TH. What's your what's your favorite so far? What is this thing is probably what is this thing is pretty great. <laughs> Light bright. Yeah. Totally. 
90s, you know, since the beginning I've been saying it, this whole thing has been, you know, just a 90s, no, I don't know. But yeah, light bright. Yeah. Switch. This is, co this is kind of a common um, challenge I have too when like mm -hmm. making music or something and I'm sitting there trying to save one of uh, a file out and I'm just, yeah. Like, I know I should and probably could just call this anything. Often that's what I do, but sometimes it helps to have a note, a list of thoughts yeah, yeah, yeah. and captures. <laughs> the thing from the Adobe Lagoon. <laughs> <laughs> that might be a front runner right now. I'm just going to throw that out there. I'm trying this with a GIF image. Oh, yeah. But it's not working. Does it stop playing altogether? <laughs> yeah, and everything just kind of turns black. I like that Snoopy dance. Yeah. Well. <laughs> you got me going on it. That's the front runner right now. All right, the thing from the Adobe Lagoon. Unless anyone has just some heat they've been holding on to and they want to drop it. <laughs> I think we're going to move on with that one because no, I like it a lot. Noise with an a, a, uh, exclamation point. Noise. Noise. Yes. It's very ray gun. Any like snake based titles also are welcome, you know. Like I probably reimagined. That's good too. Um man, these files are really slowing things down. Um yeah, I think I'm actually gonna go ahead and take screenshots. <laughs> I have to take a screenshot of this and replace it because it's uh the yeah I mean we are essentially a t like you know forcibly corrupting the file uh, so if it causes you problems that shouldn't be no surprise right so I'm gonna could be gentler and say compressing the files attempting to yeah, yeah attempting, attempting to and actually corrupting them <laughs> very possibly. <laughs> Snakes in the grain. Snakes in the grain. That's pretty good. Maybe a subtitle. Maybe it's a. Okay. Is it a little too lagoon like as well? Thematic? Is that going to cause problems for people picking this up on the shelf? Maybe. Will people pick this up on the shelf? So I'd be I'd be really curious as to what that shelf would look like right. if this right. is there. <laughs> So just a reminder that we've got about 20 minutes uh, until we're gonna review the back to the 90s themed um, photography zines. So we've got about seven so far. Hopefully we can get double that number by the time everything ends in 20 minutes. So if you're working, you still got a little bit of time, um, but start to think about how you might wrap up or make some critical design decisions. Cool. So I just replaced those images with screenshots of themselves and I feel liberated uh, and the sign is moving a little bit faster. So sorry about that. Um, let's take a look. And this same image is pasted inside the shape or was that that was, that was, that's how I had it. Uh, I'm kind of replacing one thing at a time just because I got to do some, um, yeah, so I'm, I'm copying the image. I'm kind of pasting it in place so in the exact same placement. Uh, and then I am um, flipping it vertically, cutting it, selecting that shape, and then uh, pasting in place or pasting into mm -hmm. uh, inside that shape. I wonder if it's the rendering operation from the shape itself that's... Yeah, it's probably a mix of all the horrible things that I'm doing to this. Um, so what I'm gonna do is I'm going to cut all of that. Um, I'm gonna make a new layer, put it down here. I'm gonna paste all that into, and I'm gonna lock that layer and forget it exists for now because I don't wanna play with that again. Or wait, did I just paste it in the same light? Nope, I'm good. 
cool. Oh, I also pasted <laughs> the title as I had it going, so I might come in here and take that out, lock it up again. I'm surprised you it. even saw that. Boom. But you remembered that it was there. Yeah, I just it had to be somewhere. I did not see it. <laughs> So it looks like if we keep it at this spec, we're not gonna see anything, um, which maybe is exciting, <laughs> but probably not. Um, so um, right now I would be thinking about, I guess the first things that I would try to do is, are there, within the system that we've come up with so far, are there any type treatments that I've already used that could be applicable for the cover so we're not introducing something new and maybe there can be like a reference of placement or something. So. So far, we have a handwritten mm -hmm, pencil, mm -hmm. <laughs> which is doing what it does. And I kind of uh, played with it just like a little bit after we were done writing it out. Uh, I circled the numbers. <laughs> it felt really important, like I had to do it. Uh, and then I labeled that as water, which also felt really important. Oh, yeah, definitely. Um, we don't want anyone to get the wrong idea. Yeah. And then we have the, you know, S, C, T, O, grotesque, A. There's A and B. B is like not quite a condensed, but it's slightly narrower than A. Semi condensed? Would you I say? I don't think it quite gets there. I it think doesn't it's even like, get there. It's not, uh, yeah, I wouldn't classify it in that way. It's just, it's slightly slimmer than A, but I, it, only in contrast to A, it seems see, that I way. I see. Yeah. <laughs> and then, um, so. Sort of condensed. Yeah, so the 14 by 16, like 14 size, 16 loading uh, of the STTO, stretched sol that's outlined, and then we have, um, the SCTO in 26 here with a squiggle action. And then we have a sol with an image pasted into it. Um, so I'm thinking either the sol gets like stretched and takes up some space here and does what it does, or it does what it does in its own size. Maybe we can see what this looks like at 26. See if that's quite enough. Um, we didn't establish the lighting for this, but I'm just gonna make it 30 to see what that looks like. I'm kind of betraying the semi baseline grid that yeah, I had established, grid. but I'm just kind of looking at it right now and we can kind of finesse that later uh, if we get excited about it. So from this point, I, there's a few different ways that I could go. I could either fall in love with what I have uh, as far as like a, the type choice and I can finesse the image. I can maybe bring it into Photoshop or bring in an extra layer and kind of gradient out some like darker tones up here. I can do a curve move, kind of push it that way. Or if I want to respect the image, then I just need to keep cycling through different things uh, with the type. So I'm going to pull this off to the side, copy it out. Are either of those decisions are, uh, speaking to you? Right off the bat, um, I guess I could also, there's one more, which is to play with better placement of the image. So even as I just like zoomed out and I kind of looked at it, um, I see some possibility because right here, it's darker. It's a little bit darker. So maybe I just bring that back here. And I think as long as we work on this cover, we're gonna have to work a little slower because it's uh, my computer is kind of fighting the good fight right now. <laughs> um, so I'm gonna select the whole thing. And I'm just gonna, it's gonna, oh, so yeah, one thing that is very annoying when it does that, uh, and I'm sure you guys all know mm -hmm. about this, but you can uh, select the point of reference within whatever the group or object that you have. So before I had it selected to the outside, so it, uh, it flipped along that being its axis, so it just flipped over that. It's like the middle, it, it is an asymmetrical image, so it's not gonna line up perfectly but it makes it a little bit easier. It doesn't run away quite as far. Right. It's one of those things where you hold down the arrow and then when you stop, it keeps going. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I'm just gonna let it go past it a little bit. Uh, not too worried about snapping right now. And let's take a look at what that does for us. Boom. It's legible. Yeah. It's not, you know, that legible, <laughs> but it's legible. I even wonder if this down here uh, is better for us. Wait. 
What do you think? It's interesting, it's kind of calm. Um, I think that in some ways the image is kind of like foreshadowing some of the activity and movement. Uh, but we're not like, we're not um, showing them everything right off the bat. Um, so the type is still pretty controlled and we're like, you know, leaving some surprises, I guess. I like to think of um, the cover as like a way to kind of lead people in, but at the same time, save some things, you know? Mm -hmm. I just brought in the master because uh, this page wasn't actually, you know, like operating on the, uh, the master. So I'm thinking maybe there's other spots that I can snap to that it will actually help us um, with eligibility and sort of just like have hitting that place that gets reiterated as we go through. Um, Yeah, <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> like, what is this? Like sideways? Yeah, it stimulates the <laughs> it stimulates the brain. No, I don't know what it does. Uh, it's more me being impatient and trying to wrap my head around what I think here. Um, I'm thinking maybe if we go all caps with it, um, then we can kind of consider it a brand new spec, and we can kind of buy some space, some size. Dave is asking if this is the last challenge of the week. It is the last challenge, creative challenge. Tomorrow, actually, at this time, we're going to be doing portfolio reviews. Um, we'll pick two portfolios um, of the people that are in chat, and we'll get to go through their Behance pages, take a look at some of their work, provide some thoughts. Um, so today's the last creative challenge, and this is actually the last one of the day, too. It's the final stream, so in 10 minutes, we'll be reviewing those. 90s theme photography zines. We have nine so far. I can kind of see a little bit. They're, they're looking wild. They are looking wild. I feel like I feel like you've kind of given permission, <laughs> encouraged some people to bend some rules, break some grids. Maybe the 90s did that too. Absolutely. I don't think, well, how long do they have left? Um, uh, 10 minutes. 10 minutes. If they are needing of some inspiration, another shout out I wanted to give Studio Practice. This was my uh, mentor uh, in grad school over at Cranbrook. There's quite a few. We were talking about podcasts yesterday. And some people were asking about, you know, design podcasts, because why would they want all these uh, basketball podcast recommendations <laughs> that I started spouting off? So I just wanted to pull back and, and shout out uh, Elliot. These are pretty great. They kind of cover a lot of like his studio practice. So what he does in his studio, how he works. Uh, specifically, I think that um, the problem with graphic design part one is pretty great. Uh, and uh, against the global influence of Dutch graphic design, those are two pretty great. Um, and you can probably borrow some of the visual language if you're still working through your submission. <laughs> uh, it kind of fits in with uh, with that whole aesthetic. So going back to my very, very slow InDesign file. I started doing this and I kind of immediately regret it. Um, <laughs> I kind of like the idea of how if we stack them all up, there's like you kind of you, you feel tempted to read it across uh, and you make up these sort of like non words. But at the same time, and maybe what I'll do is I'll just grab, I'll just grab that, um, and I'll make. 
make it on a different spread <laughs> and I'll bring it back in. Um, and is that to preserve what you just did or is it gonna come, is it also gonna be in the cover and you've just sort of created some continuity? Th th those images in the cover are really killing me <laughs> <laughs> with how slow. Uh, they're making everything, so right here I can kind of just Oh, like, you're just going to do it here yeah, and then bring yeah, it back. Yeah, yeah, I see. Yeah. yeah. That's what it was, right? The thing from the Adobe Lagoon. Um, and then we'll play with the spacing once we kind of know what we're doing here. Um, but do we like it better if they're all left aligned? Or do we like it better if they're all centered? I think centered. Shift O. Let's just do that. Did you just pick that up from chat? Did someone say it? No, I, I did it yeah, twice. Yeah, a lot of people were talking. <laughs> 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 Thanks, guys. Um, yeah, I should have picked it up from chat. I just picked that up from <laughs> looking at it three times <laughs> and not, you know, like, yeah. It's right there. It's Karen, right it's there. asking if there's a technical reason to use a hard enter, a, a, a full return, rather than formatting the text vertically. I believe. Um, yeah. Formatting the text vertically. Like a vertical text uh, tool, type tool. I didn't see that there here. is not a technical reason for not to do that. I think that in my head, uh, I guess I know that you can do that, but in my head, I didn't come to that immediately, and I'm just kind of like responding to things as they're happening. Uh, and in my head, I was just like, do it this way, and then I did. Um, when in reality, who who asked that again? Uh, Karen. Was it Karen? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I should have just asked Karen. I'm like, yo, Karen, uh, is there, is there a better way to do this? <laughs> and then Karen would have told me, and I would have been like, yo, that was great, uh, and you know, wouldn't have spent so long doing it. I, like I always say, when in doubt, ask Karen. Um, <laughs> cool. So this is now a thing that's here. Um, and it's going to be white. Um, and I'm going to group it. So now we're back. We're back to the struggle bus, but we'll keep moving soon enough. still really wants to fight me. It's the cover typically the hardest. What? Well, well it's, it's fighting me right now yeah, just in, in, being because of the file. In your practice, yeah. whether in school or perhaps uh -huh. you've done um, publication design um, commercially, do you, what's your, I mean, do you start with the cover? Do you kind of get the cover at the end? Is it part of, I mean, we've kind of doing it in the middle right. here. Yeah, I think um, I might, it depends on where the project is when it comes to me, I guess. Um, I usually try to save it a little bit because I usually, uh, working through something and working through the material and sort of like understanding how it relates to the page and all that stuff, uh, usually opens things up for me. Uh, and you know, I, I, I ultimately I, I'll come up with things for the cover that I wouldn't have um, had I started there. 
I'll never forget the lesson that a lot of my classmates and I mm. learned, which is to absolutely read the entire thing that you're typesetting yeah. before you make any decisions. I mean, layout decisions. And that was probably obvious, but at 19 years old, maybe it was not. <laughs> oh, I mean, uh, there's so many designers that never read what they are typesetting or, you know, never listen to the music that they're making things for. And right. Like all that. It's so important. Yeah, I think I'm gonna leave this alone like this. Or maybe we're just gonna bring in like um we're gonna go over here. I'm just gonna copy that and what was our subtitle? That was a good one, what was it? Oh, the um snake Snakes. Was no, it? snakes in the grain. Snakes in the grain. Yeah. Somebody came up with that. Yeah. Cool, we got three minutes left for the challenge submission deadline. We've gotten a lot come in in the last few minutes. I'm excited. Sarah says the vertical spacing between letters is controlled by the leading this way. And I imagine she's talking right. um, in the vertical. Mm. Vertical spacing between the letters is controlled by the leading. Well, that makes sense. Leading is always, yeah. A, yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, I'm probably not totally thinking. I'm just probably describing something that I'm not totally understanding. But yeah, because ultimately, leading yeah. is always Well, the it would with spacing. a hard return as well because you yeah. inserted a new line. Mm -hmm. I wonder if when you're typing vertically. Right, I mean, that that's, is, that's probably what you're saying. Yeah, yeah. It must be letting as well, but it could be kerning sideways. <laughs> yeah, yeah, good point. I don't know, I'm gonna test it out right now. Yeah, report back and maybe you can redesign this cover in three seconds based on that, you know, <laughs> after all the pain that I went through. <laughs> um, I would never take that away from you. The pain and suffering. <laughs> They say design is, you know, pain and suffering. That's right. Design is pain, is suffering. Yeah. Vertical type tool. I'm using Illustrator because that's where I know to find the vertical type tool. Oh man, jumping all over the place here. But maybe we can mix things up a little bit. So here's another thing that, you know, for me especially. It is kerning. Oh, yeah. Kerning controls the vertical space. Cool. Using the vertical type tool. Mm. And letting must control. Well, what is a hard carriage return? It's just like everything sideways. Letting's, you know, what yeah. you would expect letting to be, but. But sideways. Wild. Yeah. Interesting. Super fun. Helpful. I'll use it later. Uh, so, like, you know, for example, right here, we're centered, right? Uh, I kind of still, you know, like this bums me out, you know, from like, because if this was uh, right lined, like this, the, the way the end is hanging, that I can't do that. I mean, I can do that, and you should uh, fight those urges, but at the same time, that, that's not great for me either. Like, those four words are not like, you know, sometimes combination of letters or words yeah, just doesn't. Yeah, it's hard. Don't do it. Hard to find the um, balance. So I'm going to sell text on because it's like a little bit less contrast and at that size it's gonna like let us live a little bit more um we have got less than a minute we got 20 seconds to get the challenge entries in just in case you have not done the thing we have a lot to look at though it's great i wonder what this is the here i think Come on. And we're, we're going to jump right into the challenges then and kind of loop back later. Yeah, we can time. we can loop cool. back, kind of recap the work today. Um, Sweet. We might have a minute to do something and then talk about tomorrow. I like snakes in the grain. Kind of reminds me of the phrase snakes in the grass, which is, and it is kind of hidden down yeah. there. Snakes in the grass, yeah. In waiting. And we'll, we'll revisit this stuff. I think we have enough to play with. We can kind of think of all of this as like material as we start to tighten things up. Cool. Well, let's take a look at some of these. Uh, 
90s photography, 90s theme photography zine entries. And if uh, just to recap what the challenge was, it was to use InDesign, use Adobe Stock, text and image. You could use your own photos and create a 90s theme photography zine. It has yeah. to be a couple pages. I think we're referring, we're, we're going to count pages as either multiple pages or a spread. Okay. We'll count as two because it needed to be two or more pages. But we're just going to go off the cuff with this one. Cool. All right, so the first entry, Rad Summer Vibes. We've got issue cool. number one. Mm. So I think uh, in the sec in, in the spread as opposed to the cover, there's a lot like more movement and scale between like the individual components. And I like that. I think in the cover, um, the different components, it, it's it's becoming a pattern in a way that's not quite texture, but it's not quite there's not quite enough sort of I think space between those moments. It's it's so it's a little like. I don't say even crowded, but um, it's like losing itself a little bit. So maybe even getting smaller and becoming more of a texture, or getting bigger and having more sort of um, well, like elements, I yeah, mean, shape, dynamic relationship yeah, between yeah. those those different shapes, which I think you're starting to get a little bit here. But maybe the individual components are not quite as uh, beautifully drawn or uh, as nuanced as they could be. Um, but you're, you're getting like a nice composition where there's these moments to hit on. Yeah, I think introducing variety too. I mean, I get mm -hmm. the kind of the quickness in in creating a layout by just um, duplicating the sh you know the shapes that you had. But um, ultimately, I, I maybe would have uh, preferred to see um, three squiggles, but each of them is sort of unique in their own in their own way. They were all drawn same for the the size and kind of mm -hmm. edge character of the other shapes. But cool, good um, continuity in the use of color. I've uh, mm -hmm. sampled from the intro, so thank you for that. Here is cool. Click 90s. Kind of editorial. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so there's a nice movement across the spread. Um, I think that getting some variety with, uh, you know, you have the columns, uh, but then you have like, you know, you're letting some, some text go across, I think. Even going further with that, and, but but so pushing, so you have more variety and more movement, but maybe even getting a little bit tighter and taking a look at sort of, you know, having there's a, I see a widow right off the bat. Maybe your rag can have like a little bit more of a nuanced movement. I know it's not a lot of time, so maybe you're not getting everybody's kind of like you know zeroing in on their rag. But yeah, do you want to explain quickly yeah. kind of what those terms mean, widow and rag? Yeah, sure. Uh, so. Oh, it's it's yeah. So it's not a word, but ikus. <laughs> yeah, right there, just hanging out by itself. Uh, it's a, a little widow, and um, the rag is sort of the movement that you get uh, across uh, from line to line. So there's a few different ways where you can approach that, and you know, either you get like a nice swoop that or that bows out like a belly. Uh, you get kind of like a comb movement of like in and out, uh, and it doesn't look too bad. Um, I think. Ultimately, for that type size, you would want uh, a slightly wider uh, set width so that that sort of normalizes your rag on its own. Um, but yeah, yeah, that's probably. Yeah, and a good a good way to maybe see that if you have a hard time doing it, if you can, is to sort of like unfocus your vision a little mm -hmm. bit, and you start to see the text block as a shape and the edge of that shape um, where the lines end. You can kind of see that movement there and and determine whether that's pleasing or disruptive or and depending on what you're going for that can give you what you need cool so yeah it's it's funny because you know we're talking about 90s but what comes with 90s is also the things that were starting to be referenced in the 90s that were older so like all the memphis stuff with like the squiggles and yeah. all that so that that kind of comes in hot a lot of rugrats vibes mm -hmm. which is super <laughs> hot you know i think you get points every time you reference <laughs> the rugrats but um, yeah, it's looking. I mean, this it's fun. There's movement. Uh, I think you could even like amp up how dynamic that type is even more, and and you know let it like some of these elements are kind of falling out the page. I wonder if summer gets so big and so uh, expressive that it starts to fight the space that it's in. And then with that said, you know you do have a super kind of quiet. Uh, and serious block of text with really sort of like overly generous letting inside of a white box. And maybe that's fighting a little bit too much of the general vibe that you're establishing. Uh, maybe it's it's almost like here, I'm setting type, so I need a break from the fun. You know, and, right. and I think there's probably a balance there where you can kind of get uh, legibility and sort of like cleanliness, but without compromising too much on the overall aesthetic. 
Yeah, and I, I think that um, a lot of these elements that you've used, specifically the photographic elements, you know, they're all perfectly kind of square rectangles and I, I see the the attempt to kind of like you overlay them mm -hmm. and kind of um, move them around and that creates movement, it creates some depth and dynamics, but I, I would even push it further. I mean, you have so much expressiveness in the background textures and some of these shapes that like maybe put those in some irregular frames that mm -hmm. are angled or um, really blow one up and make another a bit smaller. Right. Um, it's, I think especially in the cover, it's very kind of like right. And even framed. outlining some of I'm assuming those are brushes, but you can outline that stroke and oh. sort of and place the image inside of it uh, and see what that does. And you know maybe that's really prescriptive, but sure. Um, it's an idea. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or use them as textures to kind of cut out totally. edges of the image. But great, thanks for the submission. Hey. Back to the 90s. Oh, yeah. Wow, this really threw me for a loop. The 9, 0, the S, and the apostrophe, they really became not Yeah, I think not those numbers and letters. Totally. I think there's like a, a the, the types getting pushed and being left just form and kind of, you know, like those lines are more so implying that space, like 90s or whatever. I don't, I don't know if it means 90s necessarily to me, but I, I definitely, like, I'm getting taken somewhere by the... the the specific strokes of the letter forms more so than anything else. Uh, but then you're bringing in more like, I guess, obvious, uh, like 90s looking things. So I think I, I'm more excited about like playing with that type and getting the form to speak and do something interesting uh, than sort of like, what is, you know, Googling 90s and coming, you know, right. and, and grabbing the stuff that's there. But but yeah, but it's, it's I think you're having fun, it's playful. Um, there might be just like one too many sort of like steps. Like I don't know if you need that like image with the palm trees because you already sort of have like stuff that's doing that. I would play more with the strokes like the way you're doing with the with 90s. I would play more with like your own like, you know, pattern making and all that. Yeah. Cool. Thank you for that submission. Drop that beat zine. The zine with <laughs> monster throwback beats. <laughs> okay. Tech, what is new in bumps? What is the Drop that beat scene. Yeah, so there's um there's a lot going on. There's uh I think you're doing a good job like finding places to be rigid and sort of like come up with a system and then finding places to be a little more expressive. Um, I know this is hard working with dummy text, but even so I would start to consider like, you know, that type size for that set width to be uh, justified, I think is probably a little, asking a little too much, especially, you know, if you look at that first line, uh, you're getting a lot of space. And I know I did the same thing. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so it's not so much don't do that, but, but you know, be aware of that. Um, you know, I'm not saying don't break the rules, but I'm like just saying, take note when you do mm -hmm. and do it for a reason, I guess. Um, I kind of, I'm into the way that the D and the T, the R and the H, the O, and they're sort of like lining up, but I think once you start doing that, then you have to like manually uh, uh, play with the kerning and ha have it do it in a purposeful way. Uh, the D, the T, the R, and the H kind of look great. The O and the A, I kind of start losing you. Mm -hmm. And then I think whenever you do uh, all caps, anything, you have to uh, manually current anyway, because the, the, the tables in the face are usually not so nuanced to sort of let it be all caps title, because you know, the way that that B relates to that E and B, um, I mean, compared to the rest of the word, you are getting B E, mm -hmm. you know, and maybe that's like a subliminal messaging. Uh, Beyonce eats scenes, I don't know, uh, <laughs> or B's eat Z's, I don't know. Uh, <laughs> and E's. <laughs> but yeah, no, there's enough fun and movement and uh, action. So yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, cool. And there's a dinosaur. So I mean, come on. Yeah, who could argue with that pink, pink dinosaur? Yeah. Cool, cool, cool. Wow. <laughs> Style is okay. This one, I think, has a few a few pages. Oh, wow. Cool. I'm kind of digging the, like, collage effect mm -hmm. that's happening, and some of it's even taken a little bit further. Like, this sort of photo effect, maybe I don't even, would not have seen in the 90s, but I think it's evocative of the kind of like cool factor that it yeah, needs yeah, yeah. to have. I mean, that the rest is is going for. Um, it's really interesting to me. It almost looks like it was like a scan of a piece of paper, but I know that that's just some oh, yeah. transparency and stuff. Yeah. 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 It's a little CMY. 
Okay. Yeah, so a lot of energy here. I mean, and I think that's great. And plus there's like a bulk of work here. So there's a lot mm -hmm. of ideas that you can leverage. This textural stuff's kind of cool. Um, and uh, looks like, you know, as far as balance and framing of elements, there's a pretty strong sense um, of, of how these things are kind of balancing each other out. So I do yeah, like totally. this cover, yeah. Yeah, there's a lot of moves and a lot of decisions, and I think like it's a pretty rich first pass. And I think from here, it's all about like going back through and kind of like mining through those moves and getting a little bit more obsessed with exactly how they're relating to one another. Mm -hmm. I think with the, you know, maybe with the type choice too, uh, especially the one that like you know you're getting this nice swoop. Like maybe that's not maybe there's a different typeface that would like help uh, push that in a different place. Yeah. Cool. Well, thank you. some nice movement across the spread with the photos. Uh, I like you being playful with uh, the gutter and kind of cutting through the spread. Um, I think that there's moments where you're sort of, you know, letting, you know, being rigid and, and reinstating that it's a page. And then, but then when you do things that go across the gutter, you're sort of like opening up what that space can be. Um, yeah, the, the colors are great, it's mm -hmm. super fun. Yeah. Uh, but I do think that even with this one too, like Jack is getting a little bit playful. But then there's like these sort of like um, default moves with a type um, that are, it, it feels like, you know, there's one kind of energy for image and texture and one kind of energy for type. Uh, and ultimately, you know, that can, that can be fine. But I'm just wondering if there's like missed opportunities. Uh, right. For there to integrate or even like play yeah. up. And, and they could be super subtle. Like, you know, it, it could be a 2% difference that could make all the difference, you know? Yeah. Cool. Thanks for that. Wow. <laughs> so I think they're making me want to bite my tongue. Because <laughs> here, they're definitely pushing the type through uh, where you know barely anything is legible. But right. there's a difference between something being readable and something being legible in the sense of like, you know, I read vibe, I read style, I read, you know, like all these things are understandable. Like when you look at an image and you read that image, right? So sometimes reading the text um, isn't as important. Um, it's funny because, uh, yeah, so, so it's, it's, it's fun. There's a lot of play. Um, it, yeah, it's interesting to me because it seems like the type choices and mm -hmm. in, it's intentionally illegible, which seems subversive and kind of destructive and kind of like, it's mm -hmm. really challenging. But the blue is right. like the, almost the quintessential blue of like mm -hmm. kind of corporate like, flat, calm, internet blue. Right, right, right. It's and business blue for sure. It's yeah, 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 business blue is a short way of saying it. It's not like East Klein blue. Yeah. It's not like um, internet blue. It's like... Yeah. But this yellow, I mean, this this color theme kind of um, mm -hmm. is, is seems maybe a little bit more like integrated uh, type and image, obviously, yeah. is probably drawn from it. And so it feels a little bit more intentional. And maybe that's supposed to be like an added yeah. layer of uh -huh. <laughs> subversion was to use this blue. Yeah. That we I, typically associate Even with. The, the yellow, I mean, to me, that really reads more like hippie modernism yeah, or yeah. like, you know, like s like California late 60s or something more yeah. so than 90s, but that's fun too, you know? Um, I, I guess that blue's coming from the, the roller skates. skates. Yeah. So that's a nice play. Yeah. Cool. Thank you, uh, Samuel Trotman, if that is your <laughs> real name. If that is your real name. Sorry. Mm -hmm. is almost back actually 28 right yeah it's <laughs> it's funny to it's, yeah look at some of these and not be totally able to tell yeah i can't i mean i think there are so many things influencing me here like the actual right. image and the colors obviously but like mm -hmm. the way this is typeset is like horoscope horoscope like yeah totally it, mm -hmm. it kind of is where it needs to be i think in my mm -hmm. mind at least in my memory um <laughs> No, I think this one is pretty spot on. I think that it's almost looking like, you know, if you were hired to design a magazine for a set of a show that, you know, like set in the night, like, I don't, I don't know if that's the spirit you guys were going for, but that, like, I think this would pass. Um, 
I, I really like this sort of like uh, hand cut cropping of the image. I think it could be pushed maybe even like a little further. And maybe that image is placed a little too respectfully on the page. It could be like sort of, I think more dynamically, like, you know, just pushing and forcing things to coexist. And maybe even with the placement of those elements along the spread, I think those could have been like amplified. Maybe they get bigger and they sort of fall behind the text. Maybe there's, maybe layering is what's, what's missing here a little bit. There's like a cluster of layered like elements. But yeah, but it's all missing over here. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, great. Thank you for that submission. Take your picture to the next level. <laughs> Such an intense <laughs> photo. We will go all digital. We'll all go digital. And you'll hardly see the difference. So, yeah, the, this is like the first one where I guess I felt uh, I read it. <laughs> <laughs> just because it felt like super forefronted, uh, like the messaging of it, and it's like pretty specific. Digital present, like one day we'll go, I'll go digital, and you will hardly see the difference. Hardly see the difference. Yeah, it's like a Marshall McLuhan kind of like mm -hmm. faux poem about the future. <laughs> uh, it has a lot of movement. I like the color a lot, and we uh, we looking at like the is that if the image is cropped or like how they got because there's like a funny kind of like you know mind bending way of like this thing that's. The, the, the drop shadow is onto this object that the image is being cut to respect. Right. I kind of like that because that kind of messes with my perception of depth, but also it reinstates how flat the image behind it is. Um, so I, I wonder if there could be a mix over like, you know, maybe you outline that tri one of those shapes and you actually place it on top just yeah. so that flickering is a little bit more objective. That's true, yeah. It's like this background image, though we know it was brought in mm -hmm. flat, you know, there's some things you could maybe do in Photoshop to actually duplicate some of these shapes oh, and then yeah. create this like Z-axis mm -hmm. um, where things are, are, you know, coming in and out. But yeah, nice kind of cool overall tone mm -hmm. um, brought from the back to the front. So Great. cool. We got four more and maybe like three minutes to do it. Cool. How's that sound? Sounds great. I can always keep talking. So y'all yeah. <laughs> just need to tell me. If you Keep it moving. I like this one a lot. There's Check a lot of movement out, and yeah. color. Uh, it's really, I think you really packed a lot in there, which I think was like the spirit of publications in the 90s, especially. It's like, you know, no no square inch left untouched. Uh, so that's that's feeling pretty cool. I wonder about uh, those boxes that the type is set in on the bottom, like the new kids on the block. Those boxes kind of break the magic because there's so much movement with the way the things are shaped um, that those kind of like feel a little, um, PowerPoint tea or something, a little sort of default desktop publishing. Um, but yeah, it's, I think it's like a pretty fun start, especially the cover, it's feeling pretty cool. Yeah. You got that classic uh, magazine cover move of the head being over the type. Mm -hmm. and, the um, and the barcode just lends an air of legitimacy there to you go. it. There yeah, you yeah. know, it's believable. Free iced tea totally. cassettes inside. Inside <laughs> magazine inside. cassettes. <laughs> cool. Great. The anthem. Wow. wow. Here we go. Cool. Uh, the self-kissing yellow jacket hybrid alien experience. Dual bun. With the A from the Adobe stocks <laughs> thing. That A, that that's, that's to me, that's... That's the point of tension the on this rich. whole page. Yeah, totally. That Adobe being, you know, and maybe there's something about the mirroring of the Adobe logo. You can come, oh yeah. <laughs> but yeah, there's a lot of fun going on in here. I think um, there's a, you know, a lot of, a lot to work through. Uh, but I think it's a pretty exciting first pass. I think you have a lot of rich material to kind of yeah. work through, especially with that cover. This so cover, I mean, this, wild. yeah. <laughs> there we go, we got a Klimt shout out, so. There you go, yeah, um, yeah, yeah. Yeah, this is, I think this feel, I mean, this is just so eye-catching, and <laughs> um, I mean, it's hard to kind of argue <laughs> yeah. the movement on this page, uh -huh. hair, interesting. Yeah. All right. Roll to the 90s. This is it. This is the, whole the last spread. one. No, we got one more. I just oh, meant okay. this is the, oh, yeah, this yeah. is the spread. Cool, rolling to the night. Yeah, I mean, I think it's great. It's an illustration. I wonder if uh, they found it. If they, they did it, I think it's pretty cool. That little uh, the touch of color in the laces, I think, is pretty fun. Yeah, that is. So I, I wonder, as a publication, if this folds, then the back says "roll into," and the cover says "the '90s." Uh, the typeface choice is pretty interesting. I think that that nine is pretty funky. I'm actually kind of into it, even though it's probably like. I shouldn't publicly admit to liking it. Uh, 
But yeah, it's pretty fun. Uh, the baseline as sort of the floor is kind of like a known thing to do, but it, it's effective here. Uh, I wonder if folded, you sort of would lose a lot of the compositional um, worth of this, meaning like just getting the toe of the shoe. Right. Um, yeah, if you imagine kind of covering one or the other page, what does the composition look like at that point? And that might be how somebody's sort of experiencing right. the thing. They folded the page over, it's on the mm -hmm. back. So um, that's always important to consider. But cool. And then the wow. final one. Cool. Yeah, it's kind of fun to see uh, a few of the same images. I think they're going back to uh, stocks. Yeah. Pop into these two different ones and kind of how they're being used. Uh, this one is using all of them. <laughs> so it's pretty like, dynamic in that way. I think there's maybe more opportunities to kind of make them fight each other because now they're sort of like independently occurring, but maybe they could be more integrated in a way. Um, yeah. Maybe, let's go. yeah, this is like Texture City. Yeah, um, texture City. Yeah, I'm, and I'm curious, this typeface must be... Um, I don't know, part of the template or something, because people are customizing it. But oh, right. This is where that 90s S came mm -hmm. from. Um, but that's pretty interesting. I like how some of these textures are set inside the letters. Um, they actually kind of yeah, totally. make, make this O mm -hmm. more legible. This is probably the most legible on this particular background. So here's a good example of maybe what we were talking about earlier with um, showing how the sausage is made. I think that seeing the pattern outside of the letters and seeing it in the letters here kind of detracts a little bit. So I wonder if blowing that type moment up bigger and letting it happen inside of that um, and not having the type happen again and sort of just, I wonder if that would, you know, and I, I can't know without seeing it happen, mm -hmm. but but I, it kind of makes me wonder. Yeah. So apparently there's two more rows I'm going to cool. take a look at. My super handy dandy, 92, 93, what about 94? And just make sure. Yeah, there's three. All right, cool. So that's looking fun. This movement in the composition is a nice contrast. I think that across the spread, it looks pretty good too. Um, not that it necessarily has to be this way, but I kind of wonder where to start with reading this page. And yeah. like maybe, maybe, I, you know, I, I kind of, I start with patterns and playlists for, from there. I kind of feel like I'm jumping around a little bit. I'm not totally sure of the order, uh, which could be okay. Um, I think that maybe the negative space could be leveraged a little bit better. Um, that one, two, three, it's not totally situated within that block in a way that's too captivating for me. Mm -hmm. um, but there's some great movement across the page and I think it's a great start. Yeah. Cool. I, I dig this cover, for mm -hmm. sure. Um, all right, we got two minutes, so we're gonna, have, we're gonna fly through these next two and then we're gonna pick our favorite. Cool. I think it's funny you have that boss distortion pedal there, which is like, known as the orange box. It's the orange one, yeah. Yeah, so, so <laughs> to see it not orange kind of betrays everything. No, it's fine. <laughs> uh, so that, yeah, I think that using those images and cropping them up and, you know, is a little bit of like a, uh, a zoomed in, kind of like scanned magazine look that um, feels appropriate, but sort of to see that in contrast with like really clean digital uh, shapes is like weird, but not quite weird enough to make me interested in that specific thing. Uh, but yeah, I think this is a good start of having these different things move across the, the spread. I think it needs like just a little bit more time. Yeah. And finally, it's total like different tone. I think it's still reading like of a time per se, but it's like doing it in a pretty different way than the rest of them we're doing. Yeah, it's it it's not relying on kind of the overt like mm -hmm. I hesitate to call them cliches, but the stylistic elements that most people associate, but. Mm -hmm. yeah, you're good. Cool. So, I'm gonna want to fly through these just like yeah. kind of crazy quick. Mm -hmm. We'll pick a winner and then we'll be signing off for the day. Oh, I thought I knew, and then you went back to it. <laughs> I kind of. Uh, do you have an opinion? Well, I've got. A I've got a few. There's quite a bit, though. Yeah. Um, I, I I feel like the the hair the the one where we have like the snake person uh -huh. kind of going through, and then the Let's mirrored over Adobe logo sort of dream theater reference of like internal thing going on. I like that one. Uh, okay. Some of the first ones that we saw, I liked um, the summer summer or something. Yeah, stay rad. Stay rad. Thing. So it was pretty cool. 
So I'm kind of between this one or like that really weird snake person Where experience. was, yeah, that's the one I'm trying to find. Uh, the hair, I think it was that one, wasn't it? Uh, it was the same image. Oh, okay, that's right. This one. Oh, this one, yeah, yeah. 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 Okay. So, just because this one is so weird. I have to go with this one. This one's just yeah. so weird. Yeah, yeah, they're making moves, they're trying things. Um, so that's my winner. Awesome. Well, thank you um, to for submitting all of these. They're a really incredible, fun use. I hope everybody had fun doing that. <laughs> We're gonna go ahead and shout out the winner here in chat in a little bit because I'm not sure that I have the name here, whoever did Hair90. But thank you um, for all the submissions. And I guess we're wrapping up. We got maybe less than a minute. We did some really crazy cool stuff. We did. Well, we went. We <laughs> swerved outside of InDesign for a second. Well, we yeah, had we a did. Text edit to be editing photos, mm -hmm. um, which is kind of cool. Um, be sure you join us tomorrow at this same time slot. Uh, Adobe Live is live all day, so there's three really great guests coming in doing editorial design. We'll be live for six hours. Um, if you like what we're doing here, we'll be back at the same time tomorrow. So stop by, say hi. We'll be reviewing portfolios mm -hmm. as well, giving away a few things. And uh, yeah, we look forward to seeing you tomorrow. Thanks, awesome. Lucas. Thank you so much, you guys. Everything looked great. Keep it up. See ya.